So we have a very interesting article that's coming out here by ESPN that I want to kind of give my thoughts and opinions to. Seth Walder does this every year where he grades the offseason moves after minicamp essentially ends. And he gives his grades. And for the Raiders, we got an absolute terrible grade. As expected, the Las Vegas Raiders got a D by Seth Walder of the ESPN network. And uh, he kind of crushes the Raiders. And I want to kind of talk about why I think this guy's actually wrong in his thoughts and opinions. And I also think... This is kind of the, the mass media approach. They're all kind of saying the same thing about the Raiders. And I disagree with it. All right. So essentially what he's saying is uh, the biggest move that the Raiders had was basically failing to acquire a long-term solution at quarterback. He says he lo- he likes the re-signing of Andre James. And he hates the fact the Raiders didn't trade wide receiver Devontae Adams. Now, here's the interesting thing because he, he kind of got into it a little bit more within this. He said, you know, the real issue that he has with the Raiders is that they didn't not only secure a long-term option at the quarterback position, but then the team apparently needed to recognize its non-contender status. And the team should have shifted its focus into acquiring resources to set itself up nicely for when it can acquire a quarterback and become a contender again. So essentially Seth Walder is saying, why did the Raiders not tank? Why did they not go in and sell all of their assets and try to suck as a team to get a high pick going in the next year? And why did the Raiders not take that approach? Why did the Raiders say we want to kind of just retool, revamp, and actually compete this season and actually go into this season and try to have success? You know, yesterday I was on a show with a really good friend of mine and Wasted. Some of you guys know who he is. Uh, he does Raiders content. I'll pin the actual video down below in the comments. Go subscribe to his channel. Go check that video out. But in that video, we went through the entire Raiders roster. We looked at the running backs, the O-line. We looked at the D-line. We looked at the safeties and cornerbacks. And to me, when I look at the Las Vegas Raiders roster as a whole, I see so many good things that the Raiders have done. They've really built a roster that I would say is better than majority of the rosters in the NFL. Right? The only thing that's different between if you look at a team like the Raiders and a team like the 49ers, for example, is that the Raiders don't have a quarterback. And they also don't have a coach that's proven the way Kyle Shanahan is on the offensive side. You look at a team like the Kansas City Chiefs, the Raiders probably have more talent all across the board in every single positional unit, minus the offensive line, I would say the Chiefs offense line, uh, even maybe the 49ers offense line is better than the Raiders, but across the board, right, if you don't consider the quarterback, the Raiders have better receivers, we have better, in my opinion, we have two tight ends, better than, not better than Travis Kelsey, but we have two tight ends that as a group will have better success, given they're in a competent system, right, and Brock Bowers could be better than Travis Kelsey, we don't really know. But then you look at the defensive line. I'd argue the Raiders' defensive line's better. I'd argue our linebackers are better. I would argue our secondary is better. Of course, the Chiefs have a great defensive coordinator, and I think that's kind of the difference right now with the Chiefs and, of course, Andy Reid, Patrick Holmes. But you can make the argument across the board the Raiders' roster is not a bad roster. For us to blow it up and, and trade away Devontae Adams, for us to say let's not sign Christian Wilkins, which is another thing that Seth Walder kind of says, uh, you guys can see it down below here. He says, uh, the Raiders spent a ton on defense back Christian Wilkins, which I criticized at that time as an overpay. He helps their defense, but I don't know if he's worth the price paid. You know, what Seth, Seth Walter does not realize is defensive tackle is the most important position in the NFL right outside of your quarterback. I don't think there's a more important position than defensive tackle. If you have a guy that's a difference maker on the defensive tackle position uh, at that spot, you can absolutely wreck game plans. We've seen Chris Jones do it a number of times. We saw Aaron Donald win a Super Bowl, right, against, uh, you know, I forget the team they were playing, but he went out there and he blew it up. I think it was the Bengals. Joe Burrow had the ball, could have possibly driven downfield and, and won them the game. He blew it up, and he got after it. You know, to me, defensive tackle is one of those positions where you can't necessarily overpay for a guy because it's so hard finding a good defensive tackle. So to me, the money is well worth it. It doesn't matter if you paid him more than what another defensive tackle could have gotten. Or maybe you draft a guy out there and you don't go the route of Christian Wilkins. But the truth is, is most defensive tackles are not better than Christian Wilkins. There's probably 130 defensive tackles in the NFL right now on rosters. And Christian Wilkins is one of the best five or six in the NFL. To take it a step further, this guy also said another failure for the Raiders was not trading Devontae Adams, which is almost inexcusable in the Raiders' current state. Uh, he said the 31 year old wide receiver has one cheap year left in his contract and Las Vegas needed the cash in for draft capital now. Uh, so to me, 
you know, to, to put it out there that the Raiders should have traded Devontae Adams. The Raiders should not have gotten Christian Wilkins. The Raiders should have went all in on a quarterback. It just doesn't make sense to me if, if you're really analyzing what the Raiders are trying to build. You know, when I look at a team like the Detroit Lions, right? And I look at when Dan Campbell came in and what Campbell kind of did in, in his early years with the Lions. They got a quarterback. They got an offensive coach. But it was really Dan Campbell that came in there before all of those other things happened that allowed the Lions to now be a playoff contender. You look at Antonio Pierce and kind of what he did last season. What kind of message does it send that the Raiders are tanking? They're selling their roster, but yeah, they're trying to get behind coach Antonio Pierce, who showed a ton of upside last year. What kind of message does that send to, to everybody else? You know, if you trade away Devontae Adams during the draft process, if you trade away you know, Max Crosby and Colton Miller, maybe a couple weeks before the draft or even before free agency ultimately began. Do you think Christian Wilkins is coming to the Raiders? Probably not, right? But you're selling Antonio Pierce to all the free agents out there, to all the uh, pending free agents in the upcoming season. You're selling them the Antonio Pierce dream. And the Raiders may only win four, five, six, seven games this season. They may miss the playoffs, but the year after they may make the playoffs because of that roster that they ultimately built. Plus, the Raiders have done a pretty good job drafting over the past couple of seasons. I think they have 11 guys on rookie contracts that are starting for the Raiders. That's a shit ton of rookies to have starting. We've never had that many guys. Not rookies, but guys on rookie contracts. To me, if I'm the Las Vegas Raiders, I think you're going down the right path by making sure that as an actual team and as an actual roster, you're putting guys in position that are going to allow you to have success. Right, Christian Wilkins could be the Raiders guy for the next four years. And by the time he retires or ends up leaving the Raiders, you're most likely going to have another guy that learns from Christian Wilkins. It's a guy that's going to, with Christian Wilkins, be potentially a top 10 defensive tackle. And maybe that's Byron Young. Maybe that's Matthew Butler. Maybe you draft the guy in the next couple of years in the first round. But what you're doing is you're for sure having a good defensive line this year. You're for sure having a guy that can have success and can teach some of the younger guys. And I think the big thing with these type of articles, and I hate doing this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways, is uh, this guy is saying that he liked the Raiders re-signing James to a three-year, $24 million deal. He says James ranked second in pass block win rate among centers last season. He says, I also like the signing of Cody Whitehair, who ranked sixth among guards in that same metric. You know, what's interesting is Andre James is such an average center in the NFL, uh, Cody White here is not going to start for the Raiders unless someone gets hurt. He's such an average guard slash center. Honestly, he's a great depth piece, but he's not a starting caliber player either. But this guy would like those two moves. And then he'd hate not trading Devontae Adams. And then he'd hate signing Christian Wilkins. And he'd hate having this plan where you want to have success, where you want to go out there and actually win games. He would hate that, but he'd be okay with these average players. Right, he would be okay and, and say, let's, let's go out and, and pay some of these guys. Right, eight million dollars for a center puts you as a top seven paid center. To me, you know, I don't even know if I, I, I would agree with it. Now, I understand why we, we signed Andre James. No hate towards Andre James. Uh, I'm just saying, I think the center position is one of those positions where, you know, you're either a really, really good center and you get credit as one of the top three or four guys. Or you kind of just fall in this tier where no one really knows, you know, who the starting center is for, for teams, right? Like I can ask you guys, who's the, you know, what's the name of the Falcons or the Detroit Lions or the Dallas Cowboys? What's the starting center of those three guys? And most fans, unless you're a fan of that team, has no clue who it is. And Andre James is kind of one of those guys where if you ask the Cowboys, Lions or Falcons fan, do you know who Andre James is? They'll probably tell you they have no idea, right? So that's kind of how centers are out there. But again, you know, the point is not to hate on Andre James. I like the signing. I think it was a good pickup by Tom Telesco to, to bring him back. Uh, and I like the fact that we put money into the offensive line, but I hate the fact that there's these ESPN guys or big media guys because it's not just Seth Walder, right? This isn't not the only guy that's been saying this. I've seen Colin Coward say the same thing, that the Raiders should have tanked. The Raiders did a terrible job this offseason. I've seen some of the other talking head guys out there that work for Fox and ESPN and NFL Network say that the Raiders had a shitty offseason because they didn't tape. You know, the Raiders may not win a ton of games this season, but what we are doing is we are setting the tone for the future years. I hope you guys enjoyed this little rant that I had here. If you did, subscribe. Uh, I got a lot of film breakdowns coming over the next couple of days. 
Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.